Hey, it's Frank. Welcome back to the program. Thank you for joining me. Be sure to subscribe. Hit that like button. Tell your friends and family. Just a couple hot takes today. There's a great deal of surprise, astonishment over the nationwide pro-Palestinian anti-Israel protests happening in America's cities. And I think to myself, why is there surprise? I am not surprised. Some really vile protests as well, calling for the elimination of the Jewish state, elimination of Jews. When you hear the chant from the river to the sea, that is anti-Israel, pro-Palestinian messaging, calling for the elimination of the Jewish state. The river being the Jordan River, the sea being the Mediterranean. The reason I'm not surprised is because this is a direct result of two things. Our immigration policy that's been in place for decades and what's going on in our educational institutions, especially the post-secondary educational institutions. So we have imported over the past several decades, every regional, ethnic, and religious conflict on the planet right into our own borders. And we're seeing some of this here since the terrorist attack on Israel on the 7th of October. It's not just Hamas and Israel or Palestine and Israel. We have imported people from every terrorist state that, that we have identified. We have imported the Chinese-Taiwan conflict, the Armenia-Azerbaijan conflict, the Ukrainian-Russian conflict. Again, pick a regional ethnic or racial conflict and it's here in the United States. Immigration policy matters. It's being revealed to us here in the demonstrations across American cities. Of course, many of the protesters are not immigrants. They are our fellow Americans who have been taught to hate Israel. It's interesting, some of the people that are protesting in support of Hamas in Palestine, and you have to wonder, do these people recognize what these organizations, these groups really represent. Much of the lifestyle that we live here in the United States would not be tolerated within Hamas. You can see ISIS flags being flown by these pro-Palestinian protesters. Most of the life Americans live today would not be allowed under an ISIS leadership. So I understand why some are surprised that what we're seeing here, the hatred, the size of the protests, the size of the populations that support Palestine, support Hamas, a terrorist organization. And so you can look towards two things, immigration and education. More and more people are recognizing this reality. And so it reveals the importance of good public policy that supports American citizens in America of course, we're talking about the lack of assimilation and, of course, to some extent, indoctrination or severe bias in post-secondary education America. The other hot topic I have on my mind today is fast food. I'm a fast food guy. I've been eating McDonald's at least once a week for probably 45 years. I enjoy McDonald's. I'll take a Burger King from time to time, Chipotle, Chick-fil-A. We don't have fast food restaurants anymore. They're gone. They're gone due to inflation, corporate greed, delivery apps. My McDonald's order is up 35% since December of 2019. My Five Guys order is up 36% since December of 2019. My Burger King order up 38% since December of 2019. My Chick-fil-A order up 28% since December of 2019. Pizzas, 
up 26% since the start of 2019. We don't have cheap fast food anymore. What we have now is really bad casual dining. We're paying prices for poor food that we would pay normally for better food. Not only are the prices higher, the service is horrible. The quality of the construction of the meals is really bad. I've often thought to take pictures of my Big Mac, although I'm not a big fan of taking pictures of food and posting them on the internet, but there's no two Big Macs the same anymore. The position of the sauce, the quality of the bread. Chipotle, that's hit or miss. My Chipotle is hit or miss. Oftentimes, they don't have peppers and onions ready. The scoop of chicken you get on top of your rice has become smaller. God forbid you ask for more, they look at you askance. The fees for the additions, insane. So my Chipotle order, a chicken bowl with rice, soda, 14 bucks. My Five Guys order, burger, Coke, and fries, $18. McDonald's, twelve eighty four. dollars Big Mac meal, no cheese. Burger King, twelve fifty four for a Whopper. A large pizza in my area, $17, $18. The only thing we have left in terms of fast food is a slice, the pizza slice. You can still get a slice and a soda for $4.50 to 6 bucks. An Italian combo sandwich, a grinder, a sub, 12 bucks. What's worse, of course, is how they rip us off on the beverages. The, the profit margins they have on soda is just astounding. Two fifty for a can of Coke. Three dollars for a twenty ounce can of bottle of Coke. Fast food is done. My McDonald's has just renovated itself, and it has only now one cash register at the counter. The delivery apps. Ripping the eyes out of people who are too lazy or largely, I believe that's the case, too lazy, although some obviously can't get to places. Rule the fast food dining room. Fast food in America is gone. And I guess that's okay. I mean, better less than more. But think of a, a family of four, a family of five who from time to time wants to give the parents a break from cooking dinner at home and wants to take the kids out to the fun fast food meal because fast food can be fun. That's a $70 order now. That's a $60 order. I'm one of seven, two parents. That makes nine. My father used to take us to McDonald's. We used to have so much fun. It was like once a week, once every two weeks, the whole group, you know, when a Big Mac Coke and fries was, you know, three bucks, three fifty. I know it's a long time ago, but that's not possible anymore. And again, while fast food, obviously, less is more for us in terms of our health. It's fun. It's enjoyable. It's a treat. But now it's in a very expensive treat. Now, one of the underlying forces that's driving this, of course, and this is, you can see the difference between blue states and red states. And that's the mandatory minimum wage laws put in place by states. That's the real driver for cost increases at the fast food restaurant. Remember now, these were meant to be part-time jobs for young people who are getting started, high school, college, part-time job for a parent. Now, of course, they're full-time jobs. Increase in minimum wages, of course, always results in unemployment. More unemployment, only those who remain there, keep their jobs, benefit from the higher wages. But of course, there are fewer and fewer of those people. So kind of sad to see the insane price increases at the fast food level. Inflationary pressures, think COVID, think Federal Reserve, think President Biden's efforts to eliminate the fossil fuel industry. Think minimum wage increases. This is what has stolen your joy from fast food. This is what has cost your simple burger, fries, and a Coke to go from $8 or $7 to $12.50 to $13. Bad news. Meanwhile, stock prices don't reflect this information yet. But it's going to show up. There's going to be a drop in demand for fast food restaurants for sure. Were it not for the delivery apps, I think they'd really be hurting. All right, that's all I have for you today. Just a quick check. Don't forget, always try to buy American. I'm Frank.